built by American hands since 1979. What do we got there, Mr. Terribly Tactical? It's the KDS-9C, brand new from Kimber. And this is an unboxing. Oh, look at that, dude. I'm hyped, dude. So hype right now. What does this say? For over four decades, Kimber has etched a name for itself in the world of firearms. From humble beginnings in Oregon to the state-of-the-art manufacturing in Alabama, Kimber pistols and rifles are the gold standard due to our hand-fit craftsmanship and relentless reliability. Relentless reliability. They're taking pages out of my own book, dude. With the, with the two words with the same letter in the first letter that kind of sort of rhyme and have a jingle to it. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but yeah, dude, because a Kimber is what all guns should be. Here's the bag that it comes in. Very Wilson Combat Gray-esque. Got a front pocket. What do we get? Propaganda, sticker, tools, spare fiber optics. Those greens are popping. Your lock. Second little pouch here. Oh, it matches my watch. Would you look at that? Just take a look at that. Second magazine. It is a compact frame, very similar to the EDCX9, which you will see here in a second, but 15 shot proprietary magazines. Um, I'm assuming made by Kimber. They're not marked Metgar or anything like that, so we'll see. And then here's the gun. It's not a bad little range bag. For coming with the gun these things are going to sell for like 1500 bucks ish give or take let's take a look at her so not an awful looking gun um texture is a little smooth as far as the gripping surface i like the way they did the hammer the safety snicks on real nicely snicks on and off very affirmatively i like that it's got a nice shelf so, good point to leverage against recoil, suppressor height sights, fiber optics popping. Real nice optics cut here. So, you know, you're going to be able to mount, I assume, any dot that you want. There's a look at the sight picture. Nice, crisp, clean. Trigger's not bad. Um, definitely no Wilson Combat EDC X9 trigger. And you can see by the stylizing of the gun that that's pretty much what it's modeled off to after, both in shape and size, uh, capacity. The fact that it does not have an operational beaver tail grip safety. Fluted barrel, bushingless barrel, so it's a bull barrel. Nice recessed crown on that. It's a good looking gun. Uh, I would be more apt to buy one if it had a rail on there. But uh, for like $1,500, it's about half the price of the Wilson. Don't know how it shoots. But uh, if it's reliable, as reliable as they said, relentlessly reliable, then uh, might not be a half bad option. And if they're popular enough, maybe the aftermarket picks up for them. And fourteen twenty nine, you can get one at the shop, at least our shop, because uh, other places will probably be taxing. It's a brand new gun, just came out. Adjustable rear sight, that's kind of nice. But for a gile, as it were, if you're going to use this gun as a defensive unit, I'd probably put fixed sights on the gun. But I really do like that hammer. The hammer looks cool. Again, the trigger's not bad. Yeah, it's a little mushy. But it's a production gun, not a custom gun, so a little mushy. Get the tag out of here. What are we doing? A little mushy, a little bit of take up, just like any 1911, 2011 like substance. About an eighth of an inch, hit the wall. Uh, it's maybe four, four and a half pounds. It's heavier, a little mushy, but uh, crisp enough. Give you a look at the muzz right there. I like the recessed crowns. It looks good. Plus, it does protect um, the edge of the barrel, so you don't have any degradation in accuracy if you drop your pistol on the muzzle. Flat topped, uh, serrated even. That's a nice touch. I like the serrations on the slide. Again, not a bad looking gun, but uh, an inexpensive clone. Would you say, what do you think about it, Kyle? What do you think about this thing, realistically, overall, compared to given, let's assume it's reliable. For fourteen hundred and twenty-nine dollars. Nice. Yeah, it is nice. It's not a Wilson safety, but it's nice for an out-of-the-box gun. Magazine release feels good. Slide is nice and easy. How tight is it? A uh, little wobble in it, but GIs like a little wobble. Yeah. 
pal's boyfriend goes too hard. He comes to work to the next day with a little wobble. <laughs> Ooh, look at the gap underneath the sight plate, dude. You can see air clean through that. Gross. Yeah, not quite, but <laughs> no, you could. It's on video. You could 100 percent see it. I can. Oh, yep, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it from here, dude. Yep. Just need it at the right angle. Up. Oh, well. I like the trigger, it definitely feels nice. The grips, I wish they were a little, little bit more, more aggressive. Little more texture, dude, little more texture. Both in the stippling, or not stippling, but like the the serrations or checkering or whatever they're gonna call it on like the front and back strap, let alone the grips. The grips in theory are replaceable, but I don't think they take standard 1911 grips. I doubt it. It well, looks like star BM grips on it. It doesn't feel terrible, it feels nice. For a double stack 1911, it doesn't feel like it's too thick. I mean, overall, I'd probably it's about give the size it a, of a Glock 19. Put it next to a Glock 19, real quick. I'd give it a B plus. A B plus. It's like a 97 percentile. Just kidding. It's 87 percentile. Not bad. Slightly longer. Slightly taller. Not much wider. Oh, I mean. Not bad.